What's up, guys? I'm Max from Wee Video, back again on another Tuesday with another episode of Tuesday Tips and Tricks Live. Got an exciting show for you guys today, and I'm really excited to bring on our co host, Tyler Wall. Hey, Max. You ready hey, to Tyler. do some organization today? Yeah. So today we'll be going over everything related to organizing your media and improving your timeline to make your entire workflow more efficient. I want to premise all this by saying that there's no right way to really organize your media. Everybody has their different preferences. Some are more strict um, and some are more loose than others when it comes to using folders and naming your content. We're merely going to highlight some of the best practices and features in WeVideo that can help you along the way. Right. Uh, secondly, we also have our pre-recorded uh, Tuesday Tips and Tricks video that was released earlier this morning. It's all about how to adjust audio in Wii Video. Uh, everything from increasing the overall volume or decreasing it to adding fade-in effects using uh, keyframes. So be sure to check that out. Put that in the chat. Um, with that, let's get right down to it, Tyler. Great. I'll go ahead and share my screen, and we can hop into Wii Video and go over some organization best practices. Sweet. So things can often get a little bit messy, especially when we're creating. Um, one of the last things we often think about is organizing our files and keeping things nice and neat. You can see here we're in the dashboard of Wii Video. Um, I don't have many projects right or edits rather right now, um, but let's go ahead and hop into the media tab up here. And this is a great place to start reorganizing or kind of begin your organization journey. So you can see I already have some folders set up here. Um, and then there's a couple different clips that are out of folders. So this can often happen when we're importing media. There's a couple ways to import media. We can kind of go over that a little bit too. Um, but for now, I'm going to show you how we would put these into a folder that's correct. So go ahead, highlight those clips. You can right click and click move. And then we're going to move these into drone shots. So folder I already had created and these are some drone shots. So that is a good place for them. So you can see right away they just populate into that folder. Um, down here, bottom right corner, you can see you can import media or you can create new folders. There's also, if you right click, you could create a folder or import as well. So a couple different ways to do that. All right, so that's basically the media tab. Um, Beautiful, pretty, pretty straightforward. But um, something that we often overlook. So if you guys have more questions on that tab, go ahead and fire them off in the comments section and we'll keep on moving along. So back in the dashboard, um, let's say we're just creating a new video. Actually, let's go into the projects tab first. There we go, yeah. Um, so you can see I already have this tutorials folder. One thing to keep in mind about projects, um, projects hold our edits. So one project could hold as many different video edits as you want. Uh, this folder would hold the projects. So you can see I have several projects within my folder, live videos, tutorial videos, um, and they all fall under this one folder category. So I went ahead and placed them in there. Uh, if, if it's easier for you, you can just create a new project. Let's call this, I don't know, our live demo. Um, it will ask you if you want to use any media that you've already uploaded. So we could select this one, for example. And that will add that right into our project. This is also going to give you a link. So if you're doing an edit with a, another team member and you want to share this project with them, you can go ahead and just copy this link, and that would share the project. So a great way to collaborate. And organization is a huge part of collaboration. So. That is one thing to keep in mind um, when you're working with other people is keeping your files nice and neat 
So at a glance, they can see what, kind of what's going on in your edits, right? Right. So go ahead and we'll create a new video. I'll just show you the, the process for creating a new project and video. So we would go ahead and grab our different files that we were using, save our video, and that would go, that would save directly into our demo project. So. Yeah, now that we're, let me take a step back here, Tyler. Now that we're in the timeline, one thing to point out is that you can have as many videos as you want in a project. So you can think of a project as kind of like a, well, a project, but basically like a chapter or a book. Um, and then in it, you have more chapters or subsections. Um, so you can have multiple different versions of the same video all within a project. Um, right. Or if you're teaching uh, class at school, um, maybe like this is, you know, project, this is the first semester. And you have all the videos of that categorized there. Also, I'm uh, starting to see a couple comments come in. Uh, we will be addressing all the questions toward the end after we go through our quick run through right here. Uh, but please keep it coming and we'll address all of them right after this. So, yeah, now that we're in the timeline, Tyler, uh, let's go over a few of the key features that can help keep people organized once they already got their media and they're actually creating their videos. For sure. All right, I'm gonna head, head into this project here. You can see I already created, and this one has quite a few different um, tracks on the left side here. So when you are editing a video and you end up with a lot of different layers, it can oftentimes be confusing um, as these stack up. So a great way to keep things organized is to just rename your tracks. So you can see here I have camera one, camera two, and you can go ahead and just click over into these and rename them whatever you like. Beautiful. And then um, as far as, yeah, you can name different tracks as well as the individual clips. Is that right, Tyler? Yeah, so these clips actually have kind of random names on them right now. But we can go ahead and remember that first step we did, we put these in different folders. So if you want to make these a little bit easier to know what's going on, you can see this has this long strange name attached to it. We could just call this selfie one, save. And you can see that rename the clip up here. So that's another good way to um, keep things nice and tidy. You can rename all these different clips. All you have to do is right click, rename. And then you can search for them up in the search bar in the corner. Yeah, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. If we wanted to find that clip, you could search selfie one, and it'll show up right there. So if you end up with, you know, hundreds of media files and different folders, and you're going back to an old project, and we want to know where's that selfie, it'll take you right there. So it's a, a very useful tool. Um, and another reason why you should probably be naming your clips if um, you have lots of videos. And then, Tyler, see so you've got a couple icons to the left of the search bar in the top right corner. Yeah, these are just different views. So you can, if this looks better to your eyes, you can switch it to a vertical look. Um, these also will filter out your photos, video, or audio. So it's another way to sort things. And um, this is an, also another way to sort things with date uploaded, duration, sending, descending. So if you have something that's really old, you can choose that. Or conversely, very recent, yeah. Correct. Um, last thing I kind of want to address is just the timeline itself. So it looks like we've got different tracks um, that are different height. 
And in our case, we don't have a whole lot of tracks, but one thing that we could point out is you have the ability to increase or decrease the size of the actual track height. So for instance, yeah, you can adjust the window there. Um, but yeah, you know, so sometimes when you have a lot of different tracks, as um, Max is mentioning, it gets a little bit hard to see what's going on in your timeline. There's a couple of ways to adjust. As you see here, I can adjust the zoom. I can adjust the the height. So if we had a lot, you can make your preview window really small, and that would give you more space here. But another way you can actually, and you can see on the watermark, it defaults to the smallest size. But if you click on this little carrot here, you can actually change the size of your tracks. So if you wanted to focus more in on one, you can make that nice and big or kind of just minimize it when you have that track set in your edit and you know that this is gonna be set or you just want it to be a little bit smaller for the time being. You can really fit a lot of different audio and video tracks here when you minimize these. And then you can obviously zoom in, make this bigger and smaller to your liking. But yeah, that's a great, great tip. Awesome. Um, I do see we've got a couple video comments coming in, Tyler. Sweet. Um, first one is how to use green screen in Wii Video. All right. I know we have an Academy video on it. I'm not sure if we've done Tuesday Tip yet, so that could be a good topic. Yeah, this is a premium feature that I believe is available... I think starting just at the power plant, if I'm not mistaken. That yeah, we'll check that. Sounds right. Um, but we also have a you know whole library of stock content, so let's just pull something from there. Let's actually we'll just hop into this project. It's a little more simple. Yeah, so green screen or chroma key is a very powerful tool within Wii Video and one that allows you to do a lot of different things. So if you do have a plan that has the stock media library, that's a great place to start. You can go ahead and just type in green screen, chroma key, blue screen works as well. You can even use um, yeah, I mean, a white background or a, a yeah. black background depending on the clip. <laughs> And it, it if not, you could totally make uh, a green screen at home, uh, just using a wall that's been painted green, hanging a piece of green fabric, um, as well as a bunch of other options of kind of foldable pop-up stuff. I'm using a green screen right now, uh, and this is just a green wall. Key thing to keep in mind uh, is lighting and trying to narrow, uh, narrow the shadows behind you. Um, we do have a series of videos as well as a accompanying blog post that goes kind of in depth on how to use green screen and how to set up your lights, um, which we will be including in the comments. That's right. Um, but Tyler, why don't you show us how to use the chroma key feature? Sure. Yeah, believe it or not, Max is not actually on the beach right now. He's just- uh, although, although I wish. Yeah. <laughs> 